Welcome to The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva, and today we're going to get some insight into Teachers College at Columbia University. My guest today is Dr. Tanya Castagnette, and she is the uh, Chief Enrollment Officer at the Teachers College at Columbia University, and welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Yeah, so Tanya, um, you've been on the show before, and uh, Tell everyone uh, uh, where you went to college and uh, the process of going from there to where you are today. Sure. Um, so um, you can call me Tani. Um, so I'm, I'm Tani Castaneda. Um, as you said, Anthony, I'm the Chief Enrollment Officer and ADP uh, for Teachers College at Columbia University. And um, at, right, I was on the show last year, last February, while I was at Rutgers University and serving as their Associate Vice President for Enrollment Management. Um, so I started um, in this position um, in December of 2020, so I'm just about five, six months in now um, to this new role. Um, so I, where did I go to college? I went to Wellesley College as an undergraduate. Um, that's a women's college in Massachusetts, a a uh, truly incredible liberal arts college um, that I loved, one that challenged me academically, um, certainly helped me become a, a, a better analytical thinker, opened my eyes to a lot of different paths, and I think most importantly, kind of helped me understand that there should be no barriers um, to opportunities for, for women. Um, so, um, how did I get from there to here? Um, that, that's, um, you know, quite a, Took, took a lot of time. That was about 20, 25 years ago now. Um, so I think um, one of the reasons why I've chosen to situate my career in higher education is because of how much my own higher education meant to me and my development. Um, so certainly that personal connection um, I have to the college experience and the way it influenced my life I had a lot to do with my pursuit of a career path here um, at institutions of higher education. I love to learn too. And so being in an environment that's um, in part founded to sort of create knowledge is really inspiring. Um, I had um, some early career skills that I had gained in recruiting and marketing and market research and counseling. And those skills are a very good fit um, for this type of work in enrollment. Um, my formal education training is in anthropology and psychology and organizational leadership. And so I have a bachelor's degree, two master's degrees, and a doctoral degree. And um, have always been interested in human organization, um, helping people thrive in their environments. And, you know, this is kind of what we do at a university is helping students succeed, become successful. And so uh, really simple. It kind of comes down to just wanting to see people thrive and education can be such an instrumental part of people's success. So tell me, uh, as the chief enrollment officer for the Teachers College at Columbia mm -hmm. University, um, what's it like? What do you actually do there? Yeah, so, so my role as chief enrollment officer at Teachers College, which is a graduate school of education, health, and psychology under the Columbia umbrella, uh, my job is to oversee a number of offices. So I oversee the Office of Admission, the Office of Financial Aid, the Office of the Registrar, and two smaller offices dedicated to enrollment marketing and enrollment strategy. So what does all of that mean? Um, what, am, what am I thinking through on a daily basis? So my team is thinking through how to engage future students, how to help them learn about Teachers College at Columbia, the degrees we offer, uh, whether that engagement is through email, through social media, website, video. Um, we're trying to help students understand what it is that we offer, what the application process should look like, um, how students' applications will be reviewed by our faculty, how students will be notified of those admissions decisions. Uh, through to my division, we also award financial aid. So um, the loans, grants that students could be eligible for, scholarships that might be unique to Teachers College, um, and awarding those out to students. And then once a student decides to join us through our Office of the Registrar, 
Uh, we're doing all of the course scheduling for each semester. We're getting students registered for courses. We're tracking their progress to attaining their degree right through to graduating and issuing their diplomas um, is, is what we're doing. Wow. So, so people that come to the teacher's college, are they they're graduates of a particular any particular school? And what are the requirements to get into the teacher's college? Yeah, so, um, so students who are coming to teacher's college have decided they want a master's degree, they want a doctoral degree, sometimes they just want a certificate to sort of lift their skill in a certain area. We have um, over 100 programs at the master's and doctoral level, all within the areas of education, psychology, and health. Um, some um, you know, broad areas um, like teacher education, some really niche areas like biobehavioral sciences. Um, so because there's a lot of variation in the, the types of degrees that we have, we attract a lot of different types of students. Some are coming to us straight from having received their college degree, their bachelor's degree. Others are coming to us with decades of experience in their fields. Um, and they might be pursuing really different paths, right? Someone looking to become a principal, for example, or a teacher is going to be on a different path than a student interested in international development or speech language pathology. Uh, but generally, as sort of the baseline of requirements, students have a bachelor's degree or, or should have a bachelor's degree by the time they're going to join us. Um, they need to have shown that they're academically high achieving students. Um, some programs do require the GRE or they might accept the GMAT, which is, pardon me, another uh, graduate uh, test score, standard of entry. Letters of recommendation. Um, we ask for a statement of purpose too. So we're asking for the student to make a connection between their academic preparation, their professional interests and goals, and their potential or their promise for, for the program to which they're applying. Uh, resume, give us a sense of their professional background and the experiences they've had. And in some cases, depending on the program, there might be an additional component like a writing sample that could be asked of them. But that's kind of a, a baseline of typically what's expected of our, of our applicants. And what's, what's the average amount of students that, that come to this uh, teacher's college? Do, do you get quite a number from all over the globe, I guess? We do. From, from all over the world, we're 25% international students. Um, so they're coming from you know, every part, every corner of the earth. We've got about 5,500 part-time and full-time students altogether. Many of our students are pursuing their degrees part-time because they are professionals um, and you know have other career obligations. So uh, when, a, when a student comes there after they graduate college or they've been in the workforce, uh, what, what can they expect? Yeah, so uh, a number of different things. At, at TC, um, you know, we're, we're a top 10 graduate school of education. The faculty are really incredible. They are leaders in their field. They are innovators in their fields. They can expect to have a lot of contact with their professors. Uh, they are learning directly from those experts. Um, we have a lot of students who are interested in pursuing research. Um, and certainly if they're entering into a doctoral program, that is gonna be something that's expected of them, um, whether that's uh, pursuing you know, their, their dissertation project, um, a lot of the master's students are pursuing independent research projects as well, and they'll be working right alongside faculty um, with faculty advice. There are a lot of other supports in our community too um, for students. So, um, you know, they may be receiving academic advising from their faculty, but we have an office for student health and wellness, a student affairs, student life office, our TC Next office, that's what we call our career services office. That's an office that specializes in both the broad as well as sort of the niche areas um, that our students are uh, specializing in and, and earning degrees in. Um, we're also an institution that's been from the beginning very dedica dedicated, excuse me, to social justice um, and um, very proud of the fact that our diversity, equity, and inclusion office is something that was founded 20 years ago. So the idea of 
access of equitable access to education to service in a college environment has been something that's always been really important um, to both you know our, us as an institution but I think the students who come to us are attracted to that social justice mission as well. Now uh, a full full-time student compared to a part-time student mm -hmm. uh, how quick uh, do they finish at the teacher's college compared to a part-time student? Yeah, I think I think it really depends on the student um, and how quickly they want to they want to go through it. I myself have been through, you know, a full time master's, a part time master's. I did my doctoral degree part time. Um, so it's certainly possible um, to balance these things. Um, you know, a master's degree student going full time can finish in one year or two years, um, depending on the program. If they're a part-time student, it might take them a little bit longer. Maybe it's three years, four years. Um, a doctoral student who's going full-time, that might take three, four years. Um, a, uh, someone who's going part-time, it's gonna stretch out a little bit longer uh, according to kind of what they can handle and how many credits they could take per semester towards their degree. So how, how many credits uh, do they have to get to, to finish up at the teacher's college? Yeah, so that, that again is dependent on the program too. Um, you know, there might be uh, master's degrees that are 40 plus, 30 plus credits. There are doctoral degrees that are 70 plus credits. Um, and so it depends on the field um, that they're pursuing, um, but it, it's pretty standard for master's degrees and for doctoral degrees, the number of credits that they would find in any given um, discipline area. Now, if, if someone's interested in going to school there, where, where do they find uh, the information? Is it just online or the, is there someone from the school that goes out and talks to different uh, places to, to find yeah. these types of people? Yeah, yeah. So, so when students are pursuing graduate school, there's a number of outlets of information. Of course, the, you know, the website, our website is tc.columbia.edu, teacherscollege.columbia.edu. Um, all of our programs are um, listed there, um, all of the faculty within the programs. Typically, when someone's looking at graduate school, you know, they're, they're looking at getting more depth in a particular area than they would have gotten at the bachelor's level, right? It's sort of bringing up their level of expertise. And so very often, especially if a student is pursuing a doctoral degree, they're looking really closely at the research that the faculty are doing. They're looking really closely at um, you know, what the faculty are publishing, uh, what conferences they're, they're going to and, and what they're speaking about because they want to find a faculty member who is aligned in the same research area that they, as a potential student there, have an interest in. So doing a lot of in-depth research, probably more so than you, a, a student would have done coming from high school and going into an undergrad would do is really important. And then, yeah, just like um, an office of admission at, um, um, at an undergraduate institution, our folks are um, hosting events. Um, they connect with career services offices because at a lot of undergraduate institutions, the career services offices, are the ones that are organizing graduate fairs, graduate school fairs. Um, and so we are attending those types of things. Um, we are hosting tours and our own events to introduce our students to programs. Of course, during COVID, um, everything has been virtual. Um, but it's actually made it a little bit more accessible, I think, to, um, you know, to students from many different places um, that they can sort of come on a virtual tour, attend a virtual program without having to physically be here. So now, um, are most of the students that come um, uh, just graduating from college, or do you find a lot of uh, teachers coming in? to uh, extend their their uh, experience or is it uh, more of the science field of people coming in and, and trying to expand their experiences there you know it's it's all of that um we have students who are coming to us straight from their undergraduate degree um they 
are kind of more certain of what they want to pursue and you know whether that's they'd like to become an educator they'd like to explore a field another helping profession like mental health counseling for example um, or you know they've they've found something really inspiring about um, nutrition education or spirituality and psychology or education policy and they know um, that they want to go into those areas and get more depth um, in in that type of area to pursue that um, that field we have people who have been working and have already you know certainly had many career achievements in their fields coming to us and saying I'm ready to take the next step um, and I'm ready to get that that depth um, that I haven't had before, or I'm looking for a particular certification um, in a particular education area. Um, and then sure, we, you know, we get folks, and this is um, this is kind of a common um, use too, I think, uh, or utility of a graduate degree, who want to kind of pivot on their careers a little bit and make a shift and a graduate degree can be a way to do that. Um, and so um, all, all three and probably many more than, than I can count of types of students are coming to us. So now you also talked about financial aid. Is mm -hmm. most of the financial aid um, through the students that are coming from uh, undergrads or is it, do you get the financial aid because most of these most of the adult students that are coming, they're already working. So are there companies or their schools picking up whatever the, the amount is of the school? I, I wish I could say that for most that's the case. Um, but the reality is that, um, you know, graduate school is an investment just like undergraduates. Um, sure, there are students that have support either through their own personal means or through their professional connection, but um, you know, most students are relying on a combination of loans, grants, and scholarships. Um, so those loans and grants, um, which you know, would be common at, at any graduate school as a mode of support for students, are federal loans and federal grants. Um, and then we have scholarships and different awards, uh, fellowships and things like that, that are specific to teachers college that we can award on top of or in place of those loans or, or other grants. Um, but students really do need to think about planning for graduate school. Um, and I know it's even becoming more common now for um, parents, you know, of um, students who are coming out of high school, going into their undergraduate degree to sort of be thinking ahead to, you know, is there going to be a master's degree um, or a doctoral degree layered on top of that bachelor's degree? So it's important, but I, I do think it's one of the smartest, you know, investments that people can make is in their education. Um, it's one that um, returns a lot, you know, to, to people in terms of just the number of opportunities that are opened up to people after, you know, they, they're educated at the higher institution level. So, so one question that comes to mind uh, on scholarships, um, mm -hmm. is there any way of, of giving us an example of uh, what requirements they need to have to, to get a scholarship? Yeah, so, um, so, our scholarships are, are very variable. Um, there are some general scholarships that we award through the Office of Financial Aid, where we are looking for, you know, really high achieving students who demonstrate a very strong fit for the program um, that they have um, applied to, and that can be demonstrated through their personal statement, their statement of purpose the letters of recommendation, um, their professional experience, you know, certainly if they've had experience career-wise that's aligned really well with the program, that can make them a strong fit. Our faculty are very involved in the review process. Um, and so, you know, they're reviewing applications. They are, um, you know, considering students for those scholarships as well. Um, and so, um, I think that that's a, a potential. Then we have um, sets of what we call sort of endowed awards where 
those particular awards are for students who, um, you know, an alumni may have given this award and they want it to go to a student with a particular interest or a particular background. And so um, there are more specifications that we need to consider around those types of awards. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's a wide range of them available, but I think starting with, you know, making sure the student's really academically competitive and a really good fit for the program. That's probably kind of the baseline of what we're looking for. So, so is there a lot of uh, written information that you need from the students when they, when they apply for these scholarships? Yeah, so the scholarship application is something that's built right into our application for admission. So every student um, who wants to be considered for a scholarship, we ask them that directly. Do you want to be considered for scholarships at Teachers College? And they let us know. And then if they say yes, there's a few questions that we ask them to gain a little bit more information. Not, not anything as extensive as the application for admission, because that's already a lot of substance for us, um, but a little bit more information to give us more insight into them. So now you're at Columbia University. Can you mm -hmm. give everyone a sense of Columbia University, where it is, what it's like, what the atmosphere is like? Yeah, yeah. So Columbia University is uh, 120th Street, you know, situated in the in the Harlem area. That's where Teachers College is. Um, it, it's a really vibrant community. Um, it's um, the Columbia campus is a beautiful campus. Um, it, it really feels um, um, a little bit insulated from the rest of the city. Um, and it's very widespread, um, but it's in a really um, culturally unique area, a really um, kind of robust and, um, you know, kind of uh, vibrant sort of area. There's always something going on. Um, and Harlem is really unique because it's, it's very residential. So uh, there's a lot of interaction with the community. Um, and Teachers College itself has a lot of relationships with the area schools um, and um, other um, institutions in the area. Um, I myself, you know, having joined Columbia as um, remote um, in December 2020, am certainly looking forward to um, our time back on campus. Um, and so all of the institution right now is planning for fall 2021, this coming fall semester, to be back in person and on campus. Um, so we are all preparing with the appropriate precautions, health and safety and whatnot, but I think all of us are looking forward to kind of getting back and seeing students and seeing faculty and staff more frequently. Yeah, so, so uh, you're in New York City and uh, towards, towards the Bronx area of New York. Um, and how close are you to Times Square and you know, 42nd Street and all that. Yeah, that's, that's, so we're pretty, we're pretty, you know, far up there. Um, so maybe that's what, 50, 60, 70 blocks away. Um, but everything is, you know, a subway, a subway ride away um, or a bus ride away. Um, it's pretty easy to navigate. You know, I found in, in visiting um, the campus, the times that I have been able to go, it's pretty easy to get around. Um, and, um, you know, there's parks in the area. Um, we're not far from Central Park. Um, and it's, it's just really beautiful. Great, fantastic. Well, we're coming to the end of our show. And uh, usually I ask my guests, uh, what advice do you want to give to uh, the adults out there that are looking to get certificates, uh, looking to you know, get a, a more of an education in, in the education field or the science field of some sort? What advice do you want to give them? Yeah, so for those interested in pursuing, you know, fields of education, psychology, health, and kind of everything in between that's um, helping humanitarian type of professions, um, I think it's important, you know, to always think about education as an investment in one's future. Um, I think, you know, Teachers College being a top 10 graduate school, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's an innovator in its area. It's it's a really strong education, um, but but do the research to find the right fit. I think you know just as we think about sort of right fit, 
um, at the undergraduate level, we think about it at the graduate level as well. Uh, um, I think it is something to um, consider, you know, as an undergraduate too, that you may want to go on to graduate school. And so, um, you know, thinking about how well you're doing as an undergrad throughout that four years um, is going is going to be very important too, uh, because we're looking for academically strong students. Financial planning is really important. Um, you know, on the one hand, many students are supported at the undergraduate level by their parents um, or others. Um, graduate students are considered to be independent. Um, and so, um, you know, whether you have support from your parents or not, we find that most, you know, graduate students are supporting themselves. So having planned for that um, is a smart thing to do. Um, and I think making a practical decision with the graduate degree type that you choose is really important. It certainly should, you know, feed a desire to learn about something more in depth, but it should have a practical purpose, I think, that furthers your career prospects um, in one direction or, or another that, that a student's really thought through. Um, you know, in other words, don't pursue a graduate degree just to pursue a graduate degree. Have a, have a plan with that graduate degree. I think that's really key. Well, thank you very much for coming on again. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was fun. Thank you, Anthony. Yeah. So you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva. Until next time. Thank you.